support throughout our community. It's a good place to spend your money. It's a great place to get your seeds. Hey, I want to thank Kind Selections for sending me some medicine in the mail. It's great medicine. Thank you, Kind Selections. I want to thank the Beard Brothers Society. Oh, yeah, I got my mail from Beard Brothers, too. Oh, and I forgot to bring down my giant jars of chili I got from Curry Mountain Lifestyles. So those three companies alone can take care of all your medicine needs. That's Kind Selections, Beard Brothers Society, got the poster on the wall back here, and Prairie Mountain Lifestyles. Get in touch with those cats. Get your meds mailed right to you. You don't need to go to the licensed producers. You can get a mom and pop business, spend your money in the local community. Hey, speaking of the community, Dirty Dave, limited for the t-shirts. Get yours down at CCHQ, Mark Emery's headquarters. I want to thank Remo for helping grow these amazing plants. Without those nutrients, I wouldn't have it, man. Thanks, Remo. Aim Kilns, in the house. Thanks, Aim Kilns. Great tool. Great supporter of our Piper community as well. Get in touch with me if you need more info on those. I'm a Canadian distributor now. Hey, hold look at this. <laughs> Got my 12 Kings Pub shipment as well. Drinking uh, from the lower mainland, Port Moody, an affable IPA. And that's a red beard size can, eh? I love it. So cheers to that. I'm actually drinking out of my homemade goblet. This one I made in Wells. So yeah, thank you to those sponsors. Uh, continued support. I appreciate that. And uh, now you know where to go shopping in your local community. Hey, so today's all about old school. I brought a few uh, flashback pieces down. Let me show it up on the camera here. This one I made all oh, so long ago. Okay, I'm just zooming in my uh, viewer as we do this. Woo! Hold on, folks. There we go. Oh, I'm working the monitoring chat all by myself today as well. So, oh yeah, and look what I did. Remember what I said I was going to do? Spotlight for the camera. Nice. Yeah, it's a little better. Looks great. A little better. We can go closer with that. So this is a trail and rake piece. Note the uh, rim on the bubbler is around the top of it. Nice classic mushroom and uh, classic designs here. So this is the type of thing we're going to do on today's show. We're going to push some mushrooms to start, aren't we, dude? <laughs> and it's actually uh, Jordan Hanks in the chat room. And it was him I was thinking. I was chatting with some of these newbies these days. And I don't even know how to push a mushroom, man. <laughs> Oh my god, we all learned on the mushrooms, didn't we? I had to make 30 mushrooms before I could do anything else. Oh dude, I bet you that's about the same number as me. Yeah. Siegel, I don't remember honestly, but Siegel yeah. started me on the mushrooms. Actually, I think the very first thing I did was draw four lines on a piece of clear, and then twisted it up. Oh, yeah. And then I did that again, and then you twist it up, and you pull it into a point. And that's called, well, I call it a twisty, but it's also called like a filigrana or something like that. Not a chino. Not a chino. chino. Twisty rods. So anyway, hey oh, oh yeah, not so old school, but look at my new school. <laughs> Got a robot in the shop. <laughs> Got a new Earl Electric box. Thank you, Earl Electric and Culture Rising in London for sending this to me. I'm going to test this unit out hard, and we're going to make sure that it can live up to its great reputation. It's, it's a it's, a, it's an all-American company. Every part in this unit is from the continent, I'm told. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and it's all uh, safety, safety, and happy, happy. I'm going to do a dab. I'm not stoked. It's all about low temp dab. That's what I got. It's at 613 right now. I think I set it at 610, if I'm not mistaken. Well, so it hovers right around there. Yeah, yeah no more hot trucks. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, I always heat it up my nail way too hot, so. 
Anyway, so I got my little dabber here. Let's try this out. I love how it's just always hot. So actually, what I learned is to just heat up my dabber slightly in the nail first. And then you can pick up a nice glob. And I am hitting out of my gathering piece, and I put a drop down on it. That's a nice sign glob there, I think. Hey, I think we can do it. So yeah, I'm learning how to, I'm learning how to do this better and better all the time. Let me show you what I've learned. Let me set this down in my safe spot. Uh, I'm looking for my carb cap. Where did we put that? What you have? Oh, well, culture uh, rising stuff. Oh, here it is. Oh. Oh. Da -da. It's a hey. vortex carb cap. Anyway, this thing's awesome. And the key to low temp daps is getting your carb cap on there quickly. And uh, yeah, just like Dutch ovens in there. It's fucking awesome. Here we go. Woo, that was a big one. Yup, beautiful. <laughs> it's so much more tasty than uh, before when I was hitting just the nail heated by a torch. <laughs> that did the love good. Jordan, I hope you don't mind. I'll ride your torch today, man. I was just going to come over and say hi while your torch is here, so... He came over and say hi, and I said, Get to work! Get to work. You're not allowed to out here until you make something. Yeah, well, Rick started work, what year, bud? 99 or something? 98. 98. Same as me. Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon. And I started in Victoria, BC. Yeah. And then Nelson, BC. Oh. Caslow, to be precise. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Long time run. Let's make some old Yeah, let's make some old time. <laughs> well, I'm going to start. Do you, got a, you got some rod ready for that? I got some 12 mil out. You want that? Oh. Don't push. That way you don't have to gather gather. I got two sticks, one for you, one for me. you pushed the mushroom? <laughs> I think I'm going to do the air trap. Yeah, it's years, so long. years and years. You want me to do it first? <laughs> you want to do the cameraman? <laughs> sure. We could. There's your view bar there. Do you want to do that? Yeah, let's do sure, that. Sure, let's do that. We can set this back up. Okay, go on, cameraman. Hang in there, folks. Don't get motion sickness on me. Here, grab that. Got it. Now i got to untangle it. Looks like we got a bit of a clusterfuck here. I think we'll just unplug the computer. Get that right out of there. Okay. We're clear. We're clear for you. Good. Where do you want your viewfinder and your laptop screen? Uh, whatever it's that's fine. Okay. You got your steady cam hand? Yeah. Okay. Where are you gonna go? I'll probably go here if that's alright. That's fine by me. I just wanna know so I don't know so I don't bump you. So I just got this piece out of the case, so first thing to do is make sure it's really clean. Gotta give it the old armpit swipe. That old school trick. Alright. So I'm just going to heat up the end here for a second and see if there's any bubbling and ugliness that I'm going to have to pull off with this. Just where I scratched it to snap it. That always bubbles. Then you just got to swipe a little bit of glass off usually just to get a nice clean end, like so. Okay, make sure that's clean so I don't just pick up more garbage. I'm gonna get into a little bit more flame here. So I've actually already prepared a couple pieces of color. Now you could do anything. I, I pulled a great big piece of exotic blue. I pulled some uh, twisties out. I've got some uh, exotic red and exotic green. And I was thinking of using one of these exoticnesses. And I think what I'll do is I'll use this one that I pulled out. If I pulled it out so far, I'm just going to chip it back right over here. So that'll be the color. And all this is, it's I just coated it in clear. Another old school trick so you don't bubble your color on the uh, old national torches we were using at the time. Is that the same torch? Is that what you started with? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, we didn't used to do back stacks and tooth pulls. We used to draw our lines. Yeah. So you're hitting direct flame on the colors. Yeah. So you had to clear coat it. Yeah. We're going to get to the line drawing. We're going to do some inside out work today. Okay. So without further ado, let's push a mushroom. So I've got the end is molten and, it, and the heat gradient gets colder as you get into my handle. So you just flash the end of your color 
get it hot as well. That's pretty hot. And now we place it neatly on the center. And now we push. You got me? Oh yeah. And we're pushing in straight into the handle. So you're hitting the center of the handle. You don't have to do full rotations. And you need to be careful. You need to be looking at what you're doing and not too drunk or anything because you will stab your hand at one point doing this. Now I'm going to continue pushing. It's still going in slightly. And now I'm going to cut it off right at the end here. Alright. So the first thing I do, just I heat up the end here just a little just to get that nicely gathered. Let me hold that still. You can see that. So the mushroom is in there. Now here's the trick to push in the mushroom. You gotta chase that air out. So I'm gonna change my flame to be very pointy and very sharp. And I'm starting way up at the cap. And I'm gonna work my way down. So you get the cap right liquid. Right around the cap here first. That's the trick. And now we ride up the side here. And notice my handles even to the table, parallel to the table. I haven't been gathering or lowering. And now we just have to focus on this spot. Now you're going to see the reflective flame is going to heat up the end of that rod and make a little ball on the end. And that's actually perfect. So you can see, I'll hold it up for a sec. Can you see what the black background there? The, the air is just running down the stem this way. There's a funnel shape around the stem. And it's almost there. Now if I wanted to speed it up, I could give it a quick little marver here. But it's best just to go the pace of the glass. And I'll show you. Now I've got a little bit of color left over, notice. So what I do at this stage, the clear is pretty much drawn all the way around. Now with that little ball of color at the end, it's pretty white hot. Maybe I'll let you I'll let it cool down so you can see it. See there's a little bit of color left at the end. Let me come in close. There we go. There, you see that little bit of blob at the end? Well now I'm going to go in again and I'm going to reheat that and I'm going to squish it. I, could, I should have done it right away but I wanted the camera to see it. So by heating while well, that's molten and you just come down vertical and squish that bottom up into the mushroom, that gives it like a wider base to the mushroom. It's kind of like a tree trunk. It gets wider at the base. Now I just often take my paddle and finish it up by giving it a quick ream all the way around like that. And that's pretty much it. Polish the bottom. So that's an exotic blue mushroom. And exotic colors are really fun to work with. They kind of strike out different every time and you get some metallic shades. So let's pull that out and cool it down enough for the camera to catch it. I'll come to the camera. There it is. Go vertical so you can see, yeah, that's a mushroom, isn't it? So it's that simple. So newbies, get to work. You gonna make one? Nice. Of those? I'll be gonna make Anything one. different about how you do it? Uh, no, but sometimes you can put a couple of little dots exactly. of color on Exactly. We can talk about that on the cap, um, yeah, or even on the stem, yeah. A couple of dots of white on the red cap is always a good one. Yeah, that's a perfect mushroom. Yeah. So the whole thing is that hot glass goes up into the, the hot color goes in, and when it hits the cold glass, that's what really blooms it, right? Blooms out the cap. I remember what reminds me. It's just like a, when a bullet hits a water slow motion. I don't know if you've ever seen. Oh that. yeah. With mushrooms like that. Nice. So it's just a little tack of a. You can. Oh, here is another trick. You can make the top of your mushroom pointy by removing the glass here. See. Oh yeah, like this. I don't think 
going in for the cap hot. The cap has to be glowing hot when you pull it up. You don't sink enough heat into it. There it goes. Point. Like a little psychedelic. Cool. All right, so there's the mushroom. Let's put that in the kiln. We'll attach that to the piece later. I pulled a few points here. Let's see what fun we can get up to. Should we set that in the corner? Yeah, I'm ready. Ready to get to wink? Okay, let's go ahead. Hey, look, I got a new uh, beard light. Should be nice and red again there. <laughs> Shows off the red and less of the gray. It took me forever to find that light. I thought. All right, let's see. Do we got to adjust much? That's pretty good, actually. I think I'll just bring it down a little. There we have it. I need another dab. See, the awesome thing with this is it's ready and waiting for another giant blob. Don't lose your carb cap. Tasty, tasty. This is a cotton candy. Well, the package said something else on it. Cotton candy crossed with something prayer. Where's that package? Let's see. Uh, cotton candy crossed with prayer tower. Nice packaging too for your brothers. That's very nice. It says how it was made and how many times it was flipped and at what temperature and da 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 da. Excellent. So here we have some beautiful dads on my Earl Electric. I dropped some of it on the Earl Electric. <laughs> Bring it in. Yeah, I just dabbed the Earl Electric. Check it out. <laughs> That's what we do. I'm going to hit that business. It'll just swipe it right off it. It's sticky. Come on. Got her. And my nail's still hot. Love it. Here because it's not coated. Maybe 
Maybe what I'll do is for the next coat, I'll use this uh, coated that I have. Where is that? Here it is. I'm just drawing these lines straight onto the tube. Pretty straightforward. I'm going to need, which I've already got on my bench, is some 4 mil rod. I won't use 4 mil for a lot, but this is one thing you will use it for. So I haven't put any uh, fume on this. I can as well. I've got a stick of uh, silver around here. I'll keep it over here so Rick can use it. So that's just got a little bit of silver on the end. We introduce that to the flame slowly. So now we're going to grab this 4 mil rod. Hey, what time is it? Well, we just missed 420. But the good news is, 430 is still coming up. We'll have to hit it then. <laughs> the Vancouver Sea Bank is in the chat room. We'll be giving away seeds at 430. So pay attention. Get your asses in there. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to heat up the line that I've just drawn and I'm going to squiggle it with this rod back and forth and down. And as I squiggle it, let's do a dry run without the flame. I'm going to draw from the line down and each time I turn, I'm going to twist my formula. So I'm going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, all the way down, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you give your head a twist, 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 every time you turn. Follow? Okay, now let's do it in the flame. Now you gotta get the color nice and hot so it moves. Start at the top, and back and forth, just like this. Spreading it out about halfway to the next line of color. Got it. Now, you better go on the other side because if we go right next to that, we're going to slump right into it. And I am using my big flame. You could do this with a smaller flame. Just take a lot longer. I'm all about doing this pretty quickly. How'd your mushroom thing go there? Huh. <laughs> when was the last time you did mushroom? Oh, well, like four years. Yeah. Four years. Didn't I make one uh, in your shop? For, um, yeah, in uh, Karamea, so uh, yeah, a couple years ago for a goblin. Call me uh, Herbert Arnold. That's right, I'll get Herbert Arnold. What you sold. Do you regret that or no? Uh, yeah. Well, that's a nice torch. I just had some Jason Howard for a few years. Yeah, oh well. You got little kids. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta make calls like that. That red match doesn't find no way. Hey, you mentioned something about Nortel. Why don't you tell us that story? Yeah, I wanted to do a shout out to Nortel. They, um, after my last gathering, I just couldn't stand how all of a sudden how loud my torch was. And I realized that I had a couple of torch plugs on my 11 hole pop fire. So uh, I called them up. And they're sending me a freshie, and she said, don't worry about it. Look for it for free. For free? Huge thanks to them. Yeah, they're sounds great. They're a sponsor of the glass gathering every year. They're customer service and they're still that time. Oh, yeah. Do you deal with Jean? Yes. Yeah. She's a sweetheart. So, huge thanks. You can see I went down to my 
my small flame as I got down to my handle. I'm on my last line here. Wait, I'm, whoop. I haven't done this in a while. I just threw one on the floor actually. Seven. Double check, make sure it's not resting against anything uh, flammable. That'll do. So, uh, let's have a look. Oh yeah, it's up like da That's a fun pattern. I find it's really, uh, I remember making these pipes years ago and they're really hard to break. It's, you're adding so much glass and everything into the pattern. Okay, so instead of shaping this, I think I'll just set it aside and we'll move on to another technique. I'm not even sure what we're going to make out of these. So I was thinking maybe a hammer bubbler. Let's go have another job. Nice having the nail hot. Cheers. That's delicious. The can has a really lovely description. Pops with a piney, fruity, floral bouquet with imparting heavy bitterness. I just spun mine up so I wouldn't waste it. There you go. <laughs> That's what you can do. So you just spun it up. Oh, it's a little hot to see still. And he just spun it into a swirl. So you can see that now. There's the camera. Did you ever get a silver ring around? Yeah, don't want to stick. Grassy ass. Alright, so I've got this twisty cane. I thought maybe we'd pop the end of a tube open and show how inside out's done. Let's have another throwback. That last piece I showed you was made probably about 15 years ago. Possibly the late 90s, yeah. 99, I'm guessing. These are more in the 2000s, early 2000s. I remember making this. I was working at a workshop called the Glass Onion in Vancouver. Uh, one of them's got a steal your face on it. Inside out lines, nice and close to each other. It's kind of milk style right here. The can, a couple of them are reversed. Here's the little hammer. This one, one of the lines has dichro in it. This is actually, all this glass I'm showing you uh, is a personal collection of an old, 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 great friend of mine. Went to high school with. He actually had to move to the States. So he gave me all of this glass collection that I made for him. Back for safekeeping. Anyway, let's do some inside out lines. So to make a, a twisty rod, I'm just going to tell you how to do it, and you can do that yourself. It's pretty simple. You get a piece of rod, and maybe 12 mil is good, 8 mil. Draw a couple lines on it, and twist it up and pull it. Draw four lines on it, twist it up and pull it. There's so many variations. You can draw a bunch of lines on top of each other, and uh, another layer clear and make a ribbon. So that's one you just got to experiment with. Possibilities are endless. Oh yeah, I want to have a jack first. Nice thing about it being ready. We'll use fast turning, a 
well as a graphite reamer to just ream that open. Notice how quickly that took? It's reamed wide open. I might as well give it a little bit more. I'm mentioning how quick it takes because really this isn't, you don't need to spend a lot of time on this. You're just opening it up. So I'm just going to flare this tube open and notice the angle my rod's on. See, now I can reach the uh, back of that tube. See that? All right, there we have it. Now, I want to tell you a quick funny story. When I was uh, blowing glass for the first four years, I think it was, I didn't know to plug the end of the fucking oh, yeah. blow tube. Burning yourself every day. Ow, ow, Dude, ow, I kept big big leather gloves, oh, uh, yeah. welding gloves, and I would put one on and I'd just be like, oh, burn, burn, and the steam's rushing out. Even through the leather glove, it gets hot. They just suffered through it for... And then one day, I was, someone was like, why don't you just plug the end, man? I used to say, when I used to smoke cigarettes, I used to just take my cigarette filter, rip it in half, jam it in there. Yeah, and it. yeah, I heard that trick. Now I use earplugs, yeah. or just uh, toilet paper. Okay, so now this technique has a lot of dangers, too. I burnt myself a few times doing it. Uh, you need to get inside the tube. So if you waver too much, the flame can shoot up and hit your knuckle. So I'm just going to take this pre-drawn stringer and I'm going to draw inside the tube like this. I'm going to make contact with the flame. Oh, and the biggest part about this is I'm using a GTT torch. And this torch does not want to be uh, heated up on the face of it. So we're going to try not to do that. And of course, Murphy's Law, my twisty broke, drawing it, so... It was a thin one. So we'll put the same color opposite that one, just for a little bit of symmetry. Not too close to the flame tip. I used to work on a Red Max, and uh, I literally melted the face off of one of my torches just by going too close to it. So if you tag the wall somewhere where you don't want to, you need to immediately get out of the plane and just hold still, pause. As soon as it cools down, you wiggle, wiggle, snap. Hopefully without leaving a lot of residue in the inside. And notice I'm twisting this one tighter as I get to the end of the stringer. Just twist that twisty up a little bit tighter as I apply it. Let's see, what do we got over here? I think this gold, white, blue. So there I didn't get the right spot, so I, I backed out, changed my mind, try again. There we go. Alright, there we have it. Let's see what that looks like. Now I'm going to plunge a graphite reamer into that just to get it uh, the color to stick to the sides better. So let's heat the whole glass up. Now I didn't, I did that quickly. If you took a long time, your shit's gonna crack right here. I'm telling you, boom, oh, sucks. So because it's all acute angles inside there, the color's not really working very well. Oh yeah, I have got another uh, bit to say. I've also been using Jordan X tools. <laughs> I forgot my one graphite reamer on quadra, so he's got this bull push here that's just the perfect size. See that? I just plunged it in there and it pushed everything to the side. Okay, so now we're gonna fume this bad boy. On my center gun. Cute. Fume this with silver. There it is. So now we wiggle it in and out of the flame.
flame. But you can see the flame turns green when you got the silver in there. We'll just apply it. That didn't really go on. Let's go with a more reducing flame. Sink a lot of heat into that for it to move. There we 
go. So that. I had bow ties on the brain because I was going to do a show today on bow ties. I had a glow in the dark glass and I was going to call it glow ties. Hey, look at that. What do you got over there? A bunch of oh, dots and lines school. and shit? Oh, yeah, so we have a rake, some lines, some soldiering dots. Why don't you make that the stem for the uh, hammer bubbler? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'll do the can. Perfect. So I'm not going to bow tie this. I'm just going to keep it in one ball. Just like that, just like I did on the, one of these pieces. Let me show you this throwback inside out piece. Oh, I can't see my view window. Where are you? Hello? Hello, view window. Where did you go? Oh, there you are. Ha! <laughs> there we go. Now I can see. Check that one out. Another old school piece. Look at the lizard I drew on the side of that. Isn't that fucking hilarious? Very awesome. primitive lizard drawing. I used to so draw that's spins. inside out. And the uh, same design right here. So, you used to do snails? I used to do snails when the joint is now. Did you tell Browski that? Uh, he's fucking biting your stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Okay, so I'm going to reverse this. So that means I'm going to pop a hole in the side. Right there. So I'll make the can. We have direction. We know what we're doing now, folks. We can probably whip this together pretty quick from here on, eh? Oh, yeah. I've got a downspout ready on top of the kiln, so I'll just kind of shoot for that size. Okay, so just taking off the other uh, blow tube now. Notice I puntied up on axes. It's so much easier to uh, to get that termination tight. Oh, I just remembered. Did you grab? Did someone grab that? I dropped it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Woo! What? In the back of my memory, I remember dropping a joint off the board. It's funny when you get older, thoughts just come at strange times. I tell you, when they come at all. Hard, hard. That looks sick, Vagabond. What are you going to do on that side? Because that's almost long enough. You, you could do a donut or something if you want. Oh, yeah. Good. That's an old school design. What else did we used to do? Maria's? Maria's. Sidecar. <laughs> Let's put it. Sidecar, yeah. Make it long enough. It's long enough we could do sidecar. Do my torch out. Yeah, yeah it's right here. It's right there. There we go. The termination's good. Okay, well let's put that in the kiln. So we got that piece and that piece. Well, that's pretty much enough for a, a can. Let's put those two together, shall we? After this safety break. Hey, oh, so did Vancouver Sea Bank have the uh, contest? We missed it. It's 10 to 5. Time flies when you're blowing glass, eh? Man. Mrs. Beard comments on that all the time. We're supposed to be out for dinner two hours ago. That's awesome. That's super old school. All right, I'm going old school too with the frickin' joint. How about that? As old school as it gets. Before there was glass, we had joints and pop cans. <laughs> mm, this is the uh, God Bud Green Crack. God's green crack. Beautiful plant, lovely to grow. Thanks again, Remo, for making such great dudes. Burns white ash. I had a branch break off last crop, so it hadn't even been flushed a day. 
and the stuff burns great. Not quite as perfect as this beautiful white ash, but really good. It tells you how gentle yet effective it is. Well, I'm feeling safer already. Here, can you hold this for me? I can hold that, man. Thank you. All right. So, I think I'll work this uh, top of the can. We'll put this up top. We'll work this for a bit. And now I'm just going to arrange this. That's what would Gibson say? Rage the best. <laughs> Shout out to the Quadra crew. Man, we had fun over there. I hope you've uh, seen that episode. Did you watch the episode, Rick? No, I Fuck! Go fuck yourself, yeah, eh? Yeah, I go watch it. Serious. <laughs> I've got internet now, I can do that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah, you should watch it. It yeah. was really fun. We made an epic piece. Yeah, I saw the piece, man. That's right. I saw the piece. Yeah, great big banana. So, uh, should I reverse this one too? Could do. I think I'll just keep it straight and get her done. Get her done. Do a slow twist in one direction like that. Beauty. Gonna give it a marver so it's perfect barrel shape. Making sure the color and, the, and everything's worked in nice and smooth. We'll give this a bit of a pop. And I better make sure this end is also worked in smooth or it'll come back to haunt you. This is next to my blow tube, so things will get a little sketchy. Just gotta focus on. Uh, not twisting. Hold it still. Don't let the bow tube collapse. Play right on the bow tube. Why not? It'll be fine. As long as it holds air through it still. There we go. Okay. I'm going to pop a hole. Thank you. I saw the smoke signals. a political note for a moment. Oh, yeah. That's non-partisan note. We're facing some elections in Canada coming up soon. Now, I don't care which way you vote, but just fucking vote is what I want to say. But here's our chance to get rid of uh, Harper. Like, yeah. he's, he's not been helping our country a lot. We've got one of our candidates for Prime Minister swearing he'll legalize cannabis quickly after he gets office. So that's tempting, I'll tell you. That's Justin Trudeau and the Liberals. And Thomas Mulcair sounds real good. He walks his walk and talks the talk, and he's doing things for small and young and low-income families. But, uh, and I also, I love what the Green Party's got to say, as always. So whatever you decide, I hope it's not conservative, but whatever you decide, just go do it. Help yeah. us, help us out here. Stop Harper. And I know you get catch that message on the other pop TV shows. I know McMahon likes to say it too. And it's a good message and it's one that needs to be said. I hope you're listening. I went to a website called leadnow.ca, I think is what it was. And it showed me kind of a strategic way. You enter your postal code. And so that if there's a chance of splitting the vote, which would could help Harper, then they kind of tell you which way you should vote. The best way to get Harper out, basically, is what they got there. So, check that out. 
Okay, so I'm just going to open this hole up a little. There we go. It doesn't need to be huge. Just open it a little. Put this in the kiln. Let's get the bottom ball ready. So, I've got the hole popped. I just need a blow pipe on there. Nope, we're not using any bows and swivels today. They may have had those tools old school times, but I didn't fucking know about it. Okay. I still don't really know about it. <laughs> <laughs> I have one. You oh, are old school. Here, come on here and show these, uh, show these good viewers. That is pretty sweet, girl. Oh, out of focus, but but so are we, so it's all good. So I just gotta work this down to round in a bit more barrel shape. So I've got it reversed now. So now I just gotta work it down. It would have been a lot easier on me if I had put it more round before I had reversed it. But in the tradition of old school, I didn't know to make it more round back in the day. So this is how I did it. Oh yeah. But you can uh, just marble the, the points down a bit here, like that. Have it. That'll start it. Okay. So this will be the base of the bong, I'm thinking. Just a little, I'm uh, oh, sorry, of the hammer bubbler. That's pretty long. Oh, it's a sidecar. Yeah, because that's pretty long. I was just thinking that. I should make it bigger, is what I was about to say. But if we just do the two sections on the can, we could maybe finish this on the show today. Which is always fun. Oh, great, man. Yeah. I miss the old ways. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so there we have it changed to a barrel shape. I guess it's a little white hot. I'm kind of noticing that on the camera when I hold it up. It's often just a ball of white. So, yeah. I'll wait for it to cool down to show you. Trust me, it's awesome. <laughs> Well, there we've got the round back, so that's good. All right. There we go. Can you see it yet? That's a nice ball of white, eh? Oh, it's coming in. Marble the hell out of those. There so you go. Make a couple more little marbles. Yeah, sure. Right? Yeah, yeah. Anything, even just swirls. Even swirls. Yeah. No, that's what I used to use the end of my twisties for. So let me see. Watch the beard here. I'm going in. I got some ends of twisties here, bud. That's good to use too. And what's that piece? That looks like a, a, a something exactly like we used to make. That's the fume. I'll explain. We did that on the show actually. That's ready to go. It's ready to go. Let's put that on. This is a fumed ribbon, so it's just a sandwich of uh, clear 12 mil, fume it, lay another 12 mil on it, and then twist it. So we'll put that on there, a little horn. Good thinking, Rick. Get some marbles ready. Hey, chat room. Good thinking, hey, Rick? Hey. <laughs> so uh, this inside-out stringer technique, like I said, is a lot like moop glass. Go check out Mook's Glass. He's on Facebook and Instagram. Oh, he's not on Instagram. He's on Facebook. He lives way up in the Gulf Islands. Super clean. Tight Super eyes. clean worker. It's really awesome. Yeah. Nice bright colors. Old school. Really good. Old school. I got some of his pieces here. I'm going to do a collab with him. He sent some pieces home with me. So we'll do that on a future show. So there, I've just popped open that hole. See, I think I'll plug one in. That'll make things easier. Wet the valve. Oh, hey, look, the nail's hot. Where you got my dad's? This is that cotton candy. Oh, I might not have enough hands. Oh, see the drop down.
drop down I made allows me to do it without any hands. Oh, it shut itself off. Look at that. I was like, that's a low temp. I did. I put my timer on uh, yesterday be, for an hour because I I just knew I, I didn't want to leave it on, and I was trying out all the features. And uh, so there you go. Safety feature number three. You can get it to shut itself off. That's pretty fucking great. Alright, so I'm going to weld these two together here. So the one's a little bit small, so I'm spinning it really fast, but I'll give it a quick ream. Now it's the right size. Go ahead and stick it. So now that I've got it welded, I'm just pouring heat into it on either side of the weld. With a nice wide flame, just both sides of that well, just pouring the heat in. It hasn't really shrunk much, I'm just kind of holding position. And now what I'll do, a small flame right in the center, now I'll puff it out of it. Not too hard. Just a little bit. So the piece of my right hand is much thicker than the piece of my left. Is what I just learned. And not a hard lesson. I didn't fuck anything up. But I saw that moving way quicker than this. So now I'm pouring all the heat on the right side, on the thick side of things. And all that reflective heat is enough to get the other side hot. Alright, we'll try that. There we go. A little bit more. Awesome. So now I'm going to remove this handle. Oh, wait a sec. No, I won't. But I am going to work it in a little more. It looks a little bit cute there and sketchy and I want to break later. I'm making a bubbler. I forgot almost. They're gonna push it. We're gonna push a gold next. I think I'm just gonna bulge out the bottom a little wider. The base of the can I like it to be a little wider so it doesn't tip over. So I'm gonna focus all my flame on that bottom ball, I'm basically going to push a Maria just using that the glass of the bottom ball, make it a shorter squatter bubble. Make sure this uh, left hand uh, handle is true on axes. It's going to push a bowl right now. Let's go up here and we'll remove that. I think we'll give it a slight Maria here. I haven't done that yet. I think the bar will Yeah. Yeah, there's a few out. All three of them. You got a good one. Nope, this is good. Okay. Must be a green. I don't know. Green, blue, or red. Oh, well, this one certainly. This one's coated already. What? Yeah. There you go. Perfect. And I've got another one here. Yeah, it's a little hot. <laughs> it's underneath my thing. I got another one here that's some one color coated with another color. If you want that. Okay. So now I'm just gonna heat up the top of this can of bubble it out. I like an hourglass shape. That also gives us something to attach the uh, sidecar piece to. Get a nice big bowl push. 
Maybe I'll give it a quick swirl in the bottom of the bowl. I really like that. Like that. See if that, uh, I think I did the right size. We'll see. Hopefully. Well, let's hold it up. I do uh, pop a hole in the other way. So the other side you're going. Yeah, this is going to be good. Hey? I didn't pop a hole in the other way. That's all right. Okay, I'll do that. So, I mean, what? Yeah. You did what? Yeah. Oh, man. push it that deep and right now it's there okay so I'm gonna use a bull push I'm gonna hold that onto it right now just to get it to stick I'm going to marver it sideways on my pad. Now I'll marver it down like this and sideways. Just shrink it in that lip. Now I'm going to use my angle. It's going to close the hole. This all happens very fast. Now pay attention. Here we go. Oh, and the camera's on the wrong side. Okay, I'll do it left handed. Let's see how we do. You can't see anyway. It's white fucking hot, but I'll do it this way anyway. Now we watch the whole size. It's good, it's good. Change my angle so it's down, parallel to the bench. Okay, change to the small flame and go. Left hand, well I guess I'm using my right, but I normally use my left, so it's kind of left hand. But really it's right hand. See, I'm confused now. Hoi! That went pretty good. I need to push it in a bit deeper to get proper percolation. So we'll achieve that by just kind of heating the whole end up here. Just kind of pushing it all in. Push it all in. This really thickens up the rim. And then you pull and push in there and you just get her down to where you want it. Right there. Perfect. Bolt size is slightly small. So I've got these tools. Now these are old school. I've had these since I first started. And I'd love to find another pair. They're slightly broken. They used to spring open and closed. So now I have to hold it with my other fingers to do that. But these tools will open up small bolt holes. So you buy some needle nose pliers, you file them down till they're really needle nose pliers. And then you can go in here and just open up like that. Boom. And then you use it like a little reamer too. You could use a little graphite reamer to double check your size but I know it's perfect uh, no one. so now the rim of the bowl is a little bit off but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it make sure the downspout's straight and I'll put the hole right here so that the bowl if anything the bowl is leaning towards the smoker follow let's do that pop the hole And 
can move in that hole open and get ready for Vagabond's stem on there. Oh yeah, buds. I think I'll... Oh yeah, I'll pop your hole first. We don't need this in there. This is gonna look sweet. Get oh, I meant to show too. I was going to show some pinwheeling. I'll we'll have to do that on a whole nother show, but pinwheeling is a lot of fun. You just got to get it hot, stick, and twist. Get it hot, stick, and twist. That could be the name of a song. That's right? how I used to do a lot of fire. Do a lot of wrapping, yeah. wrapping right with yeah. red, and then twist and flick it off and try and make it look like a fire. Yeah. On your little devils? Oh, uh, my little devil's there, just wild Sherlock. Oh, I popped the end. What am I doing? Not a hammer, bubbler. Close the end. There we go. It's okay. It's closed. We're good. Do a little swirl in the end. That and we'll pop a hole on the side for a sidecar. I'm obviously not clear headed enough. I need another safety break. The side of the side. So now it's good to switch sides, like letting the glass sag that way, flip it, let the glass sag that way, flip it, let the glass sag that way, and now go ahead and pop it. Ready for attachment. Who needs a dab? I do. Who's that? Oh, it's me. Oh, that's my older personality. Uh, needs a dab. Well, the nail's hot. Might as well, eh? <laughs> so flavorful that way. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Yeah, I was saying for episodes there how I was encouraging someone to get an infrared thermometer or something to measure the temperature on these things. What did you do there? Couple oh, layer so implosion. Cool. Little frit implosion? No, no, dots. Dots? Lots of dots. Oh, it's too hot. Well, let's hold it there while it cools down. It's kind of like magic. Camera one, camera two. Oh, gotcha. A few different colors in there. Uh, it looks good, man. It's cooled down. Put this all together. Oh, yeah. I think I'm enjoying your Hey, do you eat play drugs here? I have to set up my knee just to keep it. Right? You just like, oh, I think you can do that. Oh, yeah. Here, here. So, you, uh, you are heading out. Cup over. October approaches. Go on the Prairie Mountain, uh, not the Prairie Mountain lifestyle, I'm sorry, the, the Prairie Cup. The Prairie Cup. Prairie Medicinal Cup. And you yeah. blowing glass? Huge. Yes, I am. I'll be blowing glass with uh, Gibson. Nice. Walter. Nice. Uh, Shine Glass. Nice. Uh, who else coming? Uh, uh, fun fella from Edmonton, what's his name now? Uh, Head. Head glass, what's his name? Anyway, Brandy Head. Okay. He might be there. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a great time. So we'll be in Saskatoon on the first weekend of October. That'll be live on Pod TV. 
guaranteed. It's gonna be a good time. And the third week of October, I'm coming all the way to Toronto. So if you wanna catch up with me there, come meet me at Vapor Central. I'll be hanging out there all weekend for the uh, Karma Cup or whenever, wherever the events are. Get online and check that out. So that's exciting. And I'm not doing demoing there. I'm just uh, shaking babies and uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and holding hands. Yeah. 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 You're good. You're so good. You're good too? Oh, hold it for me. I got this. I got this. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to put it all together now, eh? Yeah. Do you want to do cameraman? Yeah, yeah. Stand on that side? That. And then you can see the viewfinder. That's what I was thinking. Do you like it? Yep. Let's see if the cord reaches. Okay. In a previous life, Vagabond used to be a cameraman. So now every time I get him on the hook for being the camera guy. It's true. But that was underwater, eh? And on land, but mostly underwater. So, like, do you need to hold your breath to be comfortable? Yeah, here? pretty much. <laughs> Just throw some fish at me. So, do you want to like lean the uh, tripod down? You you can slide them out and. Uh, oh yeah, and get a steady cam. Steady cam, it. or even just wherever you please. I'm gonna refill my. Look at the size of this can. This is a cool thing. You have to drink it quickly, or it'll get flat. Twitch. So, tweers. <laughs> It's fun when you misspeak while you're holding a giant beer like that. But cheers to 12 Kings Pub, 12th and Kingsway in Vancouver. Go give them some support. They're a new pub in town, craft beers everywhere. And uh, the owner of that bar is also president of the local craft beer association. So really good taste of beers. I encourage you to go down. And he's also a major supporter of the cannabis scene. So uh, get down there, 12 Kings Pub. Mm-mm. All right, so let's put this all together, shall we? We got Rick's handle. We got my can. Now, I think we better brace it. In the olden days, I wouldn't have braced it, probably. I didn't brace for the first couple of years. And then I just kind of, I guess I learned, I don't remember who taught me to brace it. Just kind of, I think I just heard through the grapevine. You should be bracing your shit. So that's what I do. So that's what we'll do here. So bo just getting both sides super hot here. Oh, do you want it on the left or the right? Uh, that way. I like that one. Yep. So it rests on your wrist. Just like that. So I like it to have a, if anything, a bit of a lean that way. So we'll go down to a small flame. And right now I'm just trying to get the position correct. I want the bowl slightly lean towards the smoker. That looks good. Oh, what'd you do down there? I just noticed that. Four-way pinch. Yeah, a little ash catch. Very yeah, cool, dude. Yeah, old you school. You see it through there. Yeah, yeah. Cool, dude. Just enough so, to... Now, here's a trick I often use, and this is old school, but this is this is good. Oh, it's all right. It's old or down. No big deal. I used to use, uh, here we go, a good example, my blow, old blow pipes for braces. They're oh, hollow. Yeah. They're lighter. So they're not as much stress because they're lighter. Oh, I noticed that's the check or something. And now we can fix it down to this side. That was funny. I got to drop something on every episode. And that happened to that time. Okay, so now while that's setting up, I'm, my, my brace isn't quite ready, but I can start heating this up. slowly around the weld and I'm hanging the liquid part down so that gravity will take it. I want to spread the weld a little, if anything. So that looks all good. It's gotten totally liquid so it's flowed. Now I just got to hit the inside. Okay, so let's 
just let that set up. So what we'll do is we'll take this handle off below the weld so that it can set in the kiln with the weld on, or sorry, the brace, the brace, the brace. Below the brace, below the weld of the brace. There we go. So when we pull that out, we can flatten the bottom and put our attachments on. This looks deadly. In kiln cam, going in. Killer. Right on, brother. So, uh, what else we gotta do? Yeah. That's about it. Catch some marbles, maybe? Catch the marbles and flatten it. We're done. Killer. You wanna set that thing down again? Yeah, let's do that. I put a leg out, though. Close up. Ah. Beard cam. Ah. So well, this one is locked out, guys. I understand now. Okay. Well, a little bit up into the light. That'll do. Yeah. That'll do. Well, hey look. Nails on. God, I love that. What about a beer? Do you get beer? Yeah, well, no, that massive can is doing me just fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> And it's delicious. Yeah. There's one here if you want to start it, but it's a kelp stout. Oh, stout. Do you like stout? Yes, sir. Oh, boy. Yeah? Ooh. It'd be a pleasure to share that with you, brother. Yeah. You need a beer cup. Look at what I got in front of me. This is going to culture rising, but uh, I'm sure they won't mind if we use the beer portion. Yeah. Come on, come on, little, here, give me a little armpit cleaner first. And actually, we can show, up. yeah, and then we'll show it full of the, it's oh. color changing with the stout, dude. Hey, it's all coming together. So look at this bad boy. This will be at Culture Rising soon. Vagabond just brought the last of the handles over. I've been busy catching up on orders. Here, you pour. You're a professional. I need a drink. And let's put this together. You know what else I'm gonna get from my kiln? This little egg timer. So my iPhone's got one. I used to, I've used it, but a 10-minute timer. Ding. So you can know when your piece is sat that, long enough. That's a really good idea. Mmm. Oh look at that. That is so cool. Look at that the light. Now look at the color of that. All blues. Where's the camera? Oh there you are. Beauty. Cheers, eh? Oh, it matches the handle perfectly. Yeah. Oh. Hey, uh, remind me before we ship these out, we gotta sign these guys. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oof. Got my tie pen upstairs. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's gotta be 10 minutes. Close enough. We're like four. So, what should I do first? I think I'll flatten it. Just keep the whole thing hot that whole time. So just removing my brace. And I'll just remove the whole bottom with it. this little nipple here. Oh, I tagged. No big deal. I just gotta get it off. Got a little carried away. Oh, it's a 
fun part about a sidecar, you gotta get the yeah. right angle. Yeah. Without uh, tagging your down spell. Yeah, exactly. Thanks for that reminder. <laughs> Oh yeah, and you can't see the down spell. Oh, sometimes, which I get. So give me a third eye. Yeah. Good. Yep. Yeah. Looks good to me. Yes, sir. Okay, just polish that. Make sure it's good. I always like the yeah, side card. Yeah, some marbles on. They just rest in your hand so perfect. Yeah, and so let's think about it. So I'll have the carb right there usually. Oh yeah. Thumb carb. Thumb carb. So let's put this right below. This one. Don't you think? Oh, yeah. Push in, pull out, take away. Polish your pumpkin mark. We'll be doing that in the morning. That's awesome. That's almost like the morning of Christmas and you open your gift and the toy is missing a piece. <laughs> no batteries. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Plenty mark. Oh, it's got it. Wow. Yeah. Oh, this is a delicious stuff. Isn't it? All right. There's one on. What else we got? We got a mushroom. Put that on the front side. Yeah. Maybe right up top. Right up top front. Yeah. It's a nice mushroom. It is a nice mushroom. Thanks, man. Whoa, it's on a thin handle. Opposite the kiln dust. Perfect. <laughs> I gotta rub that off still. Okay, remove the handle. Kiln dust off the mushroom. And now we gotta work it in so it's not a cube. And I still have to do the punchy mark. Yes, viewers, I am thinking of it. Honestly, I might just put my punchy back on and get a little bit of uh, affirmative pressure and pull here so I can push in and now pull off. Oh, yeah, see that? All my work here is done. That's how it's done, folks, right there. Push in, pull away. No acutes. That looks perfect. One quick round. Good. Yeah. Hey, what else we got? Uh, I think I just put on some clear ones. We got this. Oh, we got this one. No, we got two more, dude. Oh, yeah. So right here in the middle, below this one, maybe? So the card's there. Yeah. Let's go right here. Nice. You think? Yeah. I'm just thinking because it's yeah. a narrow thing, we'll go in so it doesn't stick out as far as if it was up here, it'd be out too far. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So right where the can gets wider. Oh, I forgot to dust it. And the great thing about old school is that there's so much randomness. Yeah. Everywhere. You could sit there and look at your keys for an hour or something. So. And that's what I liked about that fumy trail and rain. Yeah. And it changed all the time yeah, and your piece would look different. Okay, so I don't think it? I can wiggle that one off. That's a serious handle on it. Oops. No, it's good. Because I was able to push and pull. Okay, one more. In the kill. Oh, we could, uh, maybe we should garage it. We could put one off of the stem. This was a, oh, it's a fun thing to do. Oh, that thing could be a latch. Maybe we should see if it needs a kickstand. Oh, like that. See that one? Oh, point. Yeah. That one's got a kickstand because oh, it yeah. fell over. This don't, this ain't gonna fall over. No, that's I think we should put that horn right here coming up. Yeah. Well, let's throw this in here for a minute. All the things do we work? This yes. one. Yeah. Yeah. Killer. Good. 
same, but also we were also broke. <laughs> you took all your little shitty pieces, twisted them up, and stuck them on for a marble or whatever. <laughs> right? Very good play. You couldn't waste anything. Yeah, and we didn't have very many colors either, so oh. there was a lot of fume and a lot of uh, amber purple, cobalt ruby, blue, cobalt, ruby. ruby red, yeah, cobalt blue, exotic green, moss. <laughs> Okay, pick Marver to get my horn the right shape. So that turned into the right ribbon. Perfect. I think I'll give it a little hook now. Yeah. Thank you. And it's white for you on camera right now, but I'll tell you, it's sick. I'll come over and show you in just a second. Let's watch it change colors for the camera. And that's all just silver fume. Anyway, let's remove this handle. Maybe we should enter this one into the Karma Cup glass category. Yeah. So 
So in case you haven't heard, there's a Karma Cup coming up. I was talking about it. Well, they've got more than just cannabis being judged. They've got glass being judged. So I encourage you, all you glass collectors, to get your glass entered now. Get your glass shipped to Karma Cup. Look them up on the line. They're called thekarmacup.ca, I believe. And uh, they got an entry form. You mail off your piece. You can be an award-winning glass collector. And uh, you, a collector division and a glass blower division. So it's open to the public and the glass blowers. So and actually, yeah, and I could in. enter, I, I collect, I've got an Askuki bottle upstairs. Oh yeah. I could enter that. Oh, right. so it's open to everyone. She's just trying to wide, make a really wide open category just to see what comes in the door. Nice. So, awesome. Got some fun red beard glass at home? Set it on. Got some fun glass? Get it in there. Anyway, hey, I'm over by the chat room. Any uh, concerns, questions? How's the sound now? Video looks good. Hey Rick, you look good. You are handsome, handsome man. Yeah, it looks good. Thanks for tuning in. Culture Rising is in the chat. We didn't have nothing to have. Yeah. This one is courtesy of Culture Rising for sending me this fucking awesome nail. Seriously, I love it. Hey, note my drop down. Oh yeah, it's the first thing uh, Culture Rising told me. Make sure you get a good drop down for it. Look how much claim I'm going to gather here. I got like a, almost an inch of uh, tubing to collect. So I heard that was key. So that's what I do. I follow orders. I think because we're almost at the end of the show, I'm going to have a couple great big dabs. <laughs> Sometimes it looks like hair on the dab, but it's just resin pulled off into like hair leg stringers scary stuff. Okay, don't forget my diver. I'm coming. I think I'll fucking go over here. Does that reach? Yeah, you're right. Alright, that's good. Okay, let's turn this off. Save the beard, folks. Hey, did you know it's fucking World Beard Day? Today? Yeah! I didn't know this. Yeah, man. Hey, hey, how about that? Go <laughs> hug someone with a beard today. Go hug a beard. Okay, well, I should show you this monster dab. This is really good. This is the cotton candy crossed with something, something. The nail's barely slightly wet. Not really. Oh, that's so good. Beautiful unit. Congratulations, Earl Electric. I'm happy so far. This thing's awesome. It's nice and small, portable. I got it strung over here so it could be kind of visible, but I think I'll keep it over there where it's out of the way and I won't drop big globs on it. That's fun. And thanks for the carb cap, Vortex carb cap. <coughs> so hey, we're almost done here. I'm going to grab my claw, and I'm going to talk about my sponsors for a minute. Because these guys help me out a lot. It's kind of another way for me to make part of my living is to get these sponsors. So through the making of my glass and the storytelling of making of my glass, uh, these guys have sponsored me, and I'm able to make a living out this way. So uh, thank you so much, Vancouver Seed Bank, for spreading the seeds of freedom. Vancouver Seed Bank has been providing seeds for I don't know how many years. Maybe they'll tell us in the chat. I'll guess 20 at least. Like Bex, Rebecca's been in charge there for a long time and holding down the fort really well. They support tons of uh, community activities. I highly encourage you to support them as well. Hey, we haven't popped the carb yet. Oh, <laughs> this is I wonder if anyone in the chat had caught that. <laughs> Uh, hey, I want to thank Kind Selections. Uh, kind Selections is uh, producing some fine medicine. They got everything from gel caps to to uh, to dabs. Send them your medical paperwork. Oh, you know we could have shown them a blown out card. We could have put show over it. Let's do it. We ain't talking about it. We got it. Hey, and I'll pinwheel the hole closed. 
So the hole is closing, and I'm going to pinwheel it closed. Just by swooping around and giving it a swirl. I also want to thank Beard Brothers Society for being so dang handsome. <laughs> it's Beard Day. It's World Beard Day. Uh, yeah, no, they make the finest extracts too, by the way. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to try them out, get to see them. Good people. Get your paperwork. Definitely good people. Excellent supporters of the community. Recently just flew all the freaking way to Ontario for an event there to raise money for the coalition. So there, let me just show that beautiful swirl I just gave. Can you see that? Awkward position for the camera. Ah, maybe you can, maybe you can. What do we got, Amber Purple? Yeah. Is this Jordan Yeah. Jordan Sorry, bud. It's like a collab. He's like, uh, Amber Purple is his uh, contribution here. Well, I've got like eight sticks over here. We could have just used mine, but thanks, Jordan. We'll hook him up, son. You rock, bud. So here's a blown out carp. You get the spot is blown pretty close to the surface so on the can. Pretty close. Get your blob nice and hot. Put blob on close to surface spot. Now, pull away and blow at the same time. <laughs> like that. And it's really nice if you have a friend over. I should have asked him to to plug my hole so I didn't have to blow so much cold air through. But that's what you gotta do. So now I'm gonna focus right on the end of that car so I can pop it. Now what I do is open that hole nice and wide because I'm not done with this car. I'm just gonna shrink it down a little bit so it's not so protruding and on this side too and this is also working in that weld where it attached just to make sure that it's all the way worked in like that and then I brought it around so it's facing the right direction there we have it I think I'm going to draw a little bit on the upper I don't like it when carbs face to the uh, bowl. Your thumb's too close. It's got to be all about comfort. So I'm just adding a little bit to this side. And Perfect. since I know it's amber purple. What do you think, bud? Perfect. That's pretty good. I'd like to smooth this out just a little bit. Start off the old spoons like tiny spoons. Pull those off and just get your thumb a little bit further away from your lighter. Yeah. Right? <laughs> is there a little sidecar? Does it have one? No. Well, the other piece have one of these has. That's a gold card. That's a gold card. There we have it. Okay, so I left off halfway through my, uh, through my sponsor. I'm going to pick up where I left off. Frame Mountain Medicinals. Beautiful owners. Beautiful people, I encourage you to support them. Prairie Mountain Lifestyles provides medibles and dabs and wonderful things. And I encourage you to order from them. Check out their menu now. Check out this awesome t-shirt I'm wearing. It's from Dirty Dave. Dirty Dave's a really awesome guy, really fun, supporter of our community in many regards. He's always at the 420 and the Cannabis Day and all of those events. Uh, his line of shirts is available at Mark Emery's headquarters. So go downtown or contact him online to get an awesome shirt like what I'm wearing. Oh yeah. Perfect. Urban. Oh my claw is old and shitty. I'm going to have to relocate that sketch. I almost want to... Did it crack? Is just me? I heard a noise and it always sketches me. I think it's just a claw. Yeah, I think so. I'm going to hold it with my thumb and not even use the screw. So, Remo Nutrients, thank you so much for helping my plants be as healthy as they could. I am super happy with this nutrients. None of my plants have had any deficiencies or any problems. Everything looks amazing in my garden. I can't wait to show you the results. It's really hard to get them to camera right now, so you're not getting any peaks. Sorry about that. Oh 
yeah. Now I'm just going to show you this piece here in front of you. I like it a lot. Check out that horn. A little awkward with this uh, tweezers, but let's get it in the kiln. That would have been my daily driver back in the day. Oh, I'm stoked. That's beautiful. <laughs> Cheers. You want to show that blown? Uh, I do. Check out this blown out carb on that little sweetie. I want to thank AIM Kilns for sending me these amazing kilns and helping me be a distributor for the glass floors in Canada. And last but not least, 12 Kings Pub in Vancouver. 12 and Kings Way. Go down there and enjoy a craft beer. Remember, in moderation, of course. I'm not trying to encourage any kind of alcoholism here. The same as with my cannabis use and your cannabis use. Know your limits, stay within it. And also, uh, I want to thank especially Earl Electric for making such a great product and uh, Culture Rising for sending this to me. Frick, nail's hot. I might as well hit this last giant down here. So thanks First. Nortel one more time. Oh, man. good idea. Thanks for helping me out. You guys are awesome. Yeah. Jean's been at the business for a long time and she knows what the hell she's talking about. Alright. So there's a glob. Let's do this. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks, buddy. You saw that? Yeah, I got you. Where did I put that curb cut? There it is. Thanks for letting me use your torch, Jordan. Wow. That's so good. Thanks again. Have a great day, y'all. See you next week. Cheers.